Tony Moretta's. New, 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 all right, we're gonna hit a revision, and then we got some coming soon. Then we got a bunch of stuff. A lot going on. There's a lot of okay. Oh, sweet. Kick it, cause last week we uh we skipped. Okay, yeah. this week we've got an update to the 2.7 tricolor ink display. Um, it looks basically the same as this. It's got that long update to get the red color in, uh, but it's basically. A new chipset, the EK79686, the previous one, which was like the IL7368 something, uh, doesn't exist anymore. This is what we got. Um, so this necessitated a little bit of an update to the board anyways, because the uh, flex connector changed um, the length, and so we had to revise the board. And once we're revising the board, we might as well add an iSpy connector. So now uh, you can connect to this with our iSpy cables, which are 18 pins and kind of like a solderless version of um, an SPI cable, uh, good for when you want to wire and mount an ink display elsewhere, um, but you don't want to have a lot of long wires. So, uh, still has got the um, built-in SRAM, so you can use this even with a small RAM microcontroller like an Arduino Uno. Level shifting for three or five volt microcontroller. Again, iSpy has been added. Uh, SD card for storing files that you want to display on your ink. Uh, we've got two upcoming uh, devices from Espressif. This is the ESP32H2 series. Um, this uh, series of chips, these are you know, developer use only right now. They're still going through certification. Um, these chips are not Wi-Fi. They have Bluetooth and 2.4 gigahertz radio. So 802.15.4, you know, sometimes used for Zigbee or point-to-point uh, -point or mesh communication. Um, so not Wi-Fi, but probably going to be a lot lower power and uh, really good if you just want to do Bluetooth. So they're kind of uh, trying out um, new chipset options. This is the raw module, and we've also got the dev board. Uh, this chip um, has native USB, uh, but there's also a um, UART capable uh, UART add-on for debug, two USB-C ports. Uh, there's a NeoPixel, there's like, I think a power measurement jumper. Let's go back over here. Um, yeah, I think that's a power measurement jumper, NeoPixel, USB serial converter, reset and boot, and a nice uh, power supply and all the pins brought out. So I think uh, probably this is designed to target, um, uh, you know, things that are going to run Matter or Thread or, or other yeah. uh, Zigbee slash Bluetooth uh, slash 2.4 gigahertz non-Wi-Fi communications uh, for home automation. Uh, it'll probably be um, a good competitor to the ESP32C3, maybe uh, lower power use. And so far, Bluetooth on Espressos hasn't been uh, their priorities in Wi-Fi, so it's going to be good to see them, uh, you know, focusing on Bluetooth, maybe getting the low power um, uh, usage for Bluetooth um, with better lower numbers. Uh, next up, we've got two uh, more UU Gear Witty Pie boards. Um, they've been all updated to the Witty Pie 4 series. So this one is the L3V7, and the 3V7 isn't version 3V7, it's, it's Witty Pie 4. The 3V7 means that thing on the left there is meant for Lie Poly batteries. Uh, you can plug in any 3.7 volt nominal, uh, 3.7 to 4.2 volt. Lithium iron or lithium power battery. There's a boost converter that'll convert that up to five volts. And there's um, like a memory management uh, system and a real time clock that you can use to uh, power down and power up the Raspberry Pi. So it's kind of like an uninterruptible power supply, UPS, plus a real time clock, plus a control. You know, it's, it's kind of like a power management uh, tool for your Raspberry Pi. It comes in the um, bonnet or fat or micro fat, whatever, you know, mini. Um, hat uh, size, but you can use it with any Raspberry Pi that has a 2 by 20 connector. It comes with a couple accessories. Oh, here's all the GPIO. There's another, there's a microcontroller on board, by the way. There's an um, ATtiny uh, 814, I think, that it is used to, um, over I squared C, to send commands and control it. Um, so if you go, sorry, here, I just want to note one thing um this is kind of designed to plug in directly into like your pi zero or pi zero w um and you see how the socket in the top the pins of the raspberry pi plug through the board and up to it now you could use this with um, a pi 4 or any pi with a 2 by 
20 connector, but you'll want one of the a stacking header that extends the pins up because otherwise it won't be able to, only the Pi Zero is flat enough to, for this to sit um, right on the bottom. So you may need to get an extension header, which we stock in the shop and we point down in the description um, to lift it up above. Or if you have a Pi Zero and you want to keep it nice and slim, uh, the style is good. There's also um, the Witty Pi 4, which is um, which comes with um, extension header, so you're, you know, you can plug it into your um, the, the Raspberry Pi uh, 4, Raspberry Pi 3, uh, A+, plus, B+, plus, whatever. Um, this is a good demo because it shows it's um, this doesn't have a battery booster. It has a buck converter, so it's good for if you're running off of like a AA battery pack or something. It has a real-time clock with a coin cell backup. The coin isn't included because otherwise it's really hard to ship internationally or, you know, even to anywhere. Canada, anywhere. <laughs> so we do have the coin cell sold separately if you want to add it, but, you know, we don't yeah. include it in the package for, for ease of shipping. Um, but again, a power manager with real-time clock and buck converter for uh, any Raspberry Pi on-off switch um, on the right-hand side. So they do a really good job with the, the real-time clock and, and battery management. So we have a couple different options. But again, if you want uh, LiPoly recharging boosting, use that Weedy Pi Mini. This one doesn't do LiPoly. It's a buck converter. So it takes, I think, 6 to 12 volts or 6 to 20 volts and converts it down to five. So it's it's different uses for different needs. Um, and this one is is a normal hat size. That's it, it still will plug into a Pi Zero. Um, it'll just stick out kind of overhanging. What's up? Um, this is coming out soon, but I want to mention it because the next product is similar and I knew people were going to ask, when are you going to get the LoRa version? This yeah. is a uh, Feather RP2040 with a LoRa 900 megahertz module that you can use to uh, run a LoRaWAN stack or just LoRa, which, you know, is its own protocol. You don't need to run LoRaWAN, which is a, a, a type of uh, software stack that runs on LoRa. Um, 900 megahertz means you can tune it down to 868 or up to 915, and then just pick the right antenna and you're gonna still get about 20 dBm output. Um, you have all the Feather pins that you expect, um, four analog pins, I think like 20 total GPIO, Stem QT on the end there, you can plug in sensors, OLEDs, whatever, NeoPixels, eight megabytes of flash, um, that nice RP2040 core, which will work great with MicroPython, CircuitPython, or Arduino, UFL antenna, um, and the FCC IC certified uh, SX1276 based um, uh, Semtech LoRa module. So this is coming soon. But I want to mention that we have it because the next product... Starship, besides you, Lady Ada, our community, our customers, our staff, everyone who makes this thing go is... The Adafruit Feather RP2040 with RFM 69 packet radio. So this is... Packet fruit. <laughs> not... This is packet fruit. It's not a LoRa radio. It's an RF69. What's the difference? The RF69, which is sounds so similar to the RF95, which is the LoRa, this version doesn't do LoRa or LoRaWAN because it doesn't, they don't pay the licensing fee. However, it's great for sending packets of data back and forth between um, modules. It, you know, you can get easily 500 feet without much effort and you can get kilometers with really good antennas and uh, directional um, gain antennas. But if you wanted to make a simple, low cost radio node that can go much farther than 2.4 gigahertz. Uh, these are great. They use the ISM band in uh, North America. Check your location to make sure that 900 megahertz is your ISM band. We'll have the 433 megahertz version later. Uh, it has the RP2040 with 264K of RAM, so wonderful for running CircuitPython. Our Feather M0 RFM69, you know, people were like, this is such a great thing, but you design this before CircuitPython or MicroPython, you run out of memory before you can really do anything because it only has 32K of RAM. This one has 264K, so you can use interpreted languages like CircuitPython or MicroPython and do your packet radio and have sensors and have data and you are not you don't run out of memory Yay. instantly. Yay! Eight megabytes of flash, you can store data, do data logging, you know, send and receive packets. Um, a couple of antenna options. So if you're cheap and you just want to, you want to keep it simple, Solder either a spring antenna or just a piece of wire that is a quarter wave or half wave whip. 
for 915 or 868 megahertz. There's online calculators to help you figure out the length of the antenna. Solder into this little pad called Ant for antenna, and you're ready to go. Like, you're done. It's one solder. But let's say you're like, I don't even want to solder. I want a really good antenna. There is a uh, onboard UFL connector. You can use a low-cost nice. UFL to SMA adapter and then plug in any antenna you wish. Um, that's 868 to 915 megahertz. And boom, you can have a panel mount antenna without any soldering that can go very, very far. You can get a directional antenna, get a Yagi, I don't care, whatever you want to do. Um, and then uh, on the right, you can you get headers, you can plug it into a breadboard, or so all our feather wings. You get I2C, SPI, four analog pins, power supply, LiPo battery, uh, recharging, uh, regulator, reset and boot buttons, NeoPixel, um, eight megabytes of onboard flash, already mentioned that. And on the very right, there's a STEM IQT port, uh, so you can plug in all your sensors, you want an OLED. You, you know, you can actually make fairly complicated sensor nodes with no soldering, which was the goal here, is like, yeah. as much as possible, make it so people can get going. But if you want to solder, you can add a lot more power and accessories. Um, so this is our first um, board of the series where we're trying to kind of replace the um, Feather M0 and 32 4 line, upgrade them, because those are kind of now six to 10 years old. Um, yeah. Give them a refresh with the RP2040 chip, which is less expensive than those chips, but much more powerful. So we'll still carry the old ones for compatibility, but I really think, you know, if you're just looking for a new packet radio board, um, I would push people towards getting the RP2040. It's a nice, solid chip, and again, less expensive and more powerful. That's nice.